Hi everyone, my name is Michael Crooks. I'm the General Manager of Performance Pathways and Player Development for Baseball Australia. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Last week we announced that Baseball Australia had adopted USA Baseball's uh, coaching certification. Tonight uh, I'll be taking some questions on this certification and how this will affect you moving forward. So firstly I'd like to thank the people that did submit some questions to us online during the week either via our Facebook page or directly to us via our email. Uh, to get the ball rolling, the first question that we have tonight uh, was in regards to whether the, the laws in, in relation to Certificate A um, have any relevance here in Australia. Um, so basically, the, the reference to the laws and statutes within Certification A are referenced against US law. These laws are not applicable in Australia. However, we have a series of requirements uh, that coaches must still meet uh, to hit the uh, to basically meet um, our needs uh, based on our obligations to our members. These include undergoing recognised and endorsed training signed off by us, the national body, uh, which is provided by these courses. The completion of the uh, Sports Australia General Principles course, which is a, a follow-up question later tonight, uh, which I'll go to in a little bit more detail, uh, that outlines the legal responsibilities of coaches relating to their duty of care and the child safeguarding measures such as working with children's checks or the equivalent in each state. So there are some obligations that we do need to achieve from a, a legal sense, but certainly that's in reference to Australian law rather than US law. So moving on to the next question, um, the question is around background checks. Um, and are these for American citizens or Australians? Well, the background checks um, that are referred to in the USA Baseball Certification ref um, refers to an equivalent of the working with children's checks or the equivalent of that in each state, such as the blue cards, etc. It's unfortunate that there's not a national Australia check um, in order to provide safeguarding for children. One of the outcomes of the Royal Commission the Protection of Vulnerable People is a national check moving forward, but we're not quite at that stage yet. Baseball Australia strongly supports this recommendation from the federal government and publicly advocates a national check to be established in the future. The working with children's check should be produced and recorded by the group that is engaging the coach. For example, if a club appoints you as a coach for, say, Little League, um, upon your appointment, they should be citing that uh, working with children's check um, and recording the details of them, which includes the, the number on the card as well as your full name. Um, and that should be done for each coach prior to taking the field and engaging with underage players. The preferred option is the photocopy or a photo be taken of that card and kept as a record within the club. That record needs to be maintained every year. So if you have new coaches coming through every year, um, best practice is that the club goes through that process once again. Um, if, this, if a coach was to be appointed for, say, a state team or a national team, so a state team would require your state association to go through that process and, and view that card. If it was a national team, uh, clearly someone like myself would have to cite that card and maintain a record of that. All right, so what is the baseball, uh, sorry, what is the Sports Australia General Principles course? So this course is basically uh, a standardised framework for creating safe and engaging environments for participants at any age. This course includes items such as your obligations as a coach around fairness and treating people with some kind of respect and dignity, while also outlining your core responsibilities and duty of care as a coach. In addition, it outlines some key baseline knowledge uh, for effective coaching. For those of you, and I'll give you an intuitive example, for those of you who have undertaken first aid training, you'll be well aware that annually you need to go through your CPI and EAR components of your qualification to make sure that there's a refresher of that. The general principles of coaching should be reviewed annually for all coaches regardless, regardless of their status in the game. Just to remind you and refresh you annually, uh, annu an annually of your duty of care and core responsibilities as a coach. So the next question uh, came through on, a, on an email from Gary from New South Wales early today. What is the minimum age uh, to be able to get a certification? Um, right now, there is no minimum age uh, for people to undertake the certification. In fact, I believe it will be of great benefit for all members to undertake the certification, regardless of their age and role within the sport, to both get a better understanding of the responsibilities that coaches have, but to also gain a greater understanding of the game of baseball. So where that 
um, differs a little bit is in the application of uh, appointing a coach, which is very different to the educational component of that. And Baseball Australia will be working on a set of guidelines for appointing coaches at club level, um, which will have some age recommendations within that. We believe that these guidelines are good practice as there can be some significant concerns surrounding a coach who may not possess some of the life skills or maturity required to ensure appropriate levels of duty of care are applied in trainings and games. An example of this might be a uh, young member who may have gone through their certificate A, uh, it might be 13 or 14 years of age, and it may not be appropriate either because of their knowledge of their teammates to be coaching, say, the age group that they're participating in or looking after little tackers within T-ball that, that may need a little bit more uh, parental supervision. Our uh, next one that came through is how do I actually become a performance coach? And it's a really good question because the performance coaching pathway is a little different to what uh, this pathway around participation represents. So the focus of the USA Baseball certification is specifically targeted towards participation level of baseball. The roles undertaken in the club environment are vastly different to those undertaken in performance pathways programs, such as underage state, uh, state teams and high level performance competitions, such as the ABL or national team representation or professional baseball. These roles at these higher levels, so pathways and professional levels, are becoming more and more specialised with a mountain of coaching and technical knowledge uh, that are required to deliver out good outcomes in this environment. And I, I think we could use many examples in recent times, in particular around the boom of technology, as examples of how people still need to be upskilled in a very regular advanced nature to be able to apply that knowledge um, with those high performing athletes. Baseball Australia, with the support of the Australian Institute of Sport, has commenced a program of targeted coach development, specifically aimed at pathway coaches at this point in time to try and fast track that knowledge base uh, for coaches engaging in, at this level. So moving forward, targeted coaches will have their required skill gaps identified with access to advanced coach ed education, either provided or significantly uh, discounted by Baseball Australia. An example of this is Baseball Australia's relationship with Driveline Baseball, where we've put some 120 coaches through training over the last two months at both the general education level and a very targeted bespoke level, in particular when we start talking about high level uh, technical parameters around biomechanics for pitching, etc. Moving forward, we won't be just limiting ourselves to driveline though. There are other opportunities which in some cases uh, may be educational modules at a tertiary level um, that once again that address the bespoke needs of the coaches. And that could vary from leadership courses, uh, through to uh, very advanced technical components within biomechanics. It could be through statistical analysis. Um, it could be just through advanced communication techniques. All these um, courses that could be on offer to people in the future um, really need to be tailored towards what, they, what an individual coach needs to make sure that any barriers they have from being an effective communicator and effective coach are addressed. So one of the common questions that's come through uh, since our announcement uh, last week was why people can't do the Certificate C course right now. And there's two parts to this. Um, firstly, you can do the course, um, certainly the course work. The second part is the practical uh, assessment that occurs at the end of Certificate C. Um, right now, we can't do the practical component of C uh, for two primary reasons. The first is that it's our belief right at this stage that the course content and application of the principles between, uh, within A and B do take some time to digest and put into practice. And we want to create some space uh, between the access of these modules, which has already commenced, and the final course uh, within this participation pathway. Uh, of level C to put some of those learnings from A and B into practice first and foremost um, and not uh, have any confusion or clouding what is the good education within A and B um, by just confusing it with some of the more advanced layers in, in C. Um, the second reason is, is a pure logistical reason. Uh, we do need to put together some recognised uh, or recognised training workforce um, that will be doing the assessing. This does take time. 
um, and we have a six month window to ensure that our set assessors are meeting the standards that we expect as an organization who, who are going to be assessing coaches. This is Baseball Australia's perspective, as well as meeting the training requirements for USA Baseball. And we're working very closely with them on, on how to get that up and running as quickly as possible. And indeed, if we do get that going earlier than the planned January timeline, we'll make sure that everyone's notified of that and make those courses available to you. Um, there is a path moving forward where USA Baseball are conducting some clinics for Cert C online. However, these need to be reviewed for their relevance in Australia by us. Um, and um, that is another avenue which will open up to you um, if we are, either look like we're going to be delayed um, in the rollout of the practical component of, of Cert C or we think it is of, of real high value to, to you as a member around the country. But either way, it is coming. You'll get access to it, um, and it's not too far away, and, and we know that you're going to be very, very happy with the outcome. Uh, next question through, it, it refers back again to the, um, to the working with children's check. Um, and the question is, why, uh, what do I do with my working with children's check? And so as I shared before, um, it does take um, space in your, your wallet or your purse quite often. Um, it does serve a very, very powerful purpose in terms of making sure that parents have peace of mind, that you're a fit and proper person to be looking after uh, underage people. Um, and again, that, that needs to be presented back to the club um, prior to your appointment of a position where you're gonna be working with kids. Um, it is unfortunate the number of sports over the years have had uh, people involved in and around them uh, at different stages across the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years uh, that have done the wrong thing by children. Um, and we want to make sure that as a sport, uh, we're protecting our children to the best of our ability. And this um, minor annoyance in terms of, of, of getting one of these cards and making sure that we maintain records of them is worth it in the long term for protection of you as a coach, but also to uh, clearly as a protection for our children. Okay, so next question uh, is in relation to the, the app that supports the coaching. Um, I hope that um, for the people who have looked at the coaching course so far, uh, they haven't skipped over the fact that there is an outstanding app that accompanies the USA Baseball certification. Um, and that is downloadable uh, both from our webpage, our coaching webpage on baseball.com.au, um, and also from USA Baseball's uh, uh, coaching website or their, their sport development website. Um, and basically what that app does, it contains a lot of the skills described within the courses themselves. It has really, really good quality video uh, of really highly competent people undertaking the skills. It has single page worksheets, which outlines how you set up the drill, what the teaching points are within the drill and what the learning outcomes are for the drill. And the learning outcomes are critical uh, to inform our players what the outcome or what the goal is of that drill prior to going through it. Um, and they are, that app is available for free for everyone. I strongly recommend that you download that app and use that resource to assist you in planning your training sessions as well as um, having your teaching points at, ready with you at a moment's notice. So if you know, you're trying to balance you know, heaps of kids within the training session and you sort of lose your way on, on what the key points are, you have that in your pocket ready to go where you can quickly refer to your phone. Um, I, and what, the way I've been playing around with it is when I start a training session, I just do a screen grab of all those um, drill sets, just store it in my photos, and I can just cy cycle through that based on the drill I'm coaching at the time. Um, also, too, with that, um, there are some preloaded training session plans in there. So if you're racing around, you're late to training, haven't really thought about what you need to do within that training session for that night, um, you can quickly flick through one of those pre-made plans, have that accessible to you, and you can easily roll that. And you know then you're going to produce a really good quality session that the kids are going to really enjoy. So next question that, that came across our desk, um, are there refresher courses that have to be done? So for those of you who have undertaken the, um, the National Coach Accreditation Scheme uh, uh, program before, um, there was historically an expectation that uh, you underwent further training over the duration of, of, your, of your accreditation, which is generally about three years, uh, to make sure that you're still advancing your knowledge um, and that you are refreshing the information that you're taking into um, to make sure that um, you're applying best practice still. 
While we don't have an official uh, requirement at this stage for people to undertake further training once they've done the initial course, we will be in, um, putting together a framework going forward of what those refresher courses look like. For example, within the USA Baseball uh, uh, sports development webpage or their coaching webpage, you'll see that there are additional modules in there for training. For example, some of the pitch smart guidelines and some of the learnings that go along with that. Um, the joy of the way in which USA Baseball has set up uh, their learning modules is that they are recorded uh, on your record on their website um, as additional modules of education in conjunction with Cert A, B and C. So what the expectation will be is that you've gone through an additional three of those modules over a three year period of time. So basically one additional module per year is what we'd be looking at uh, for you to maintain that certification. So the next question is how long does the certification last and do they uh, do you need to renew? So historically with the renewing process with the existing accreditation, um, it has revolved around basically paying a fee to, to Baseball Australia to ensure that, that that accreditation is current. Well, clearly we've moved towards um, a structure where we've made coaching or coach education at this level free of charge, which I think is a brilliant outcome for our sport on two fronts. Firstly, um, we're eliminating a significant barrier uh, for why people get into coaching in the first place. And secondly, it's the acknowledgement that our coaching workforce is a volunteer workforce and having to pay for the privilege to coach uh, just doesn't really make sense to us in, in, in terms of wanting to encourage our volunteers to stay within the game. So from that perspective, um, there's no renewal process from a financial sense that you'll need to make. Um, and when it comes to, again, how long does that certification last for? While there's nothing official in place, again, our expectation would be that the, the, the coaches do work on their own personal development and the ask of going through those three additional modules over a three year period, we don't believe that's an unreasonable request to make sure that, again, everyone's staying up to speed with what good coaching practice looks like. So next question asks, how will the changes and updates uh, in the certification be notified? Um, primarily, that will be via baseball.com.au, either through our social media channels or through directly through the website. But either way, we'll make sure that um, any significant changes um, are shared with you well ahead of time before they were, they'll be executed. So for example, if USA Baseball was to instigate Certificate D, um, and that was looking at more advanced coaching into a performance pathways type territory or performance territory, um, we'll be working with USA Baseball to make sure that we were sharing that information with our members well ahead of time. Um, and if any obligations change within the USA Baseball framework but to maintain your certification, again, we will, we'll be working through a timeline which uh, was more than reasonable to make sure that you are well informed um, and making sure that uh, no one was caught by surprise um, in relation to any changes to that certification. So that's the last of the questions that's been tabled with us um, in our question and answer tonight. One, one point I would like to stress is that if you do have a current um, Baseball Australia coaching accreditation, it does not end right now. We will honour the full life of that accreditation. So if you attained that, set of, uh, that accreditation, say, last month, it will be valid for the full three years. And upon the end of the, or the, the end date of that certification, you have a six month window to transition to the new certification. So if you're concerned that the course you may have done in the last year or two may not be valid any, any, uh, anymore, please rest assured it's not the case. Um, and if there's any questions that you have in relation to uh, the transition across the new USA Baseball certification um, or any questions around this, um, this shift that Baseball Australia has made, in any manner, please feel free to contact us. Um, my email address is michael.crooks at baseball.com.au. I'm more than happy to step anyone through uh, any queries they may have um, or engage with us via our, our Facebook page and uh, we'll try and get those answers out to as many people as possible. But thank you for your time tonight. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed the... Uh, I hope you enjoy the USA Baseball certification as much as we've had rolling it out and, and working through it ourselves. And um, I hope to see you all again in the very near future. Thank you very much.